Today I'm going to show you how to set time with PowerShell with some scripts that I found and I added a few pieces to it, so let's look at it. Hey there, this is Tom with Tom's Tech Show and today we're actually doing a tech episode. I know I do other episodes about uh, movies and TV shows that I like and maybe photography things that I like. I kind of mix it up. They're in playlists, so just pick a playlist and go with it, you know, if you like that subject or whatever those videos are. Uh, but today we're doing something technology-wise. Um, I have some servers that are out there uh, that I manage that need to keep time. So, you know, Active Directory, you can only have time get off so far from the client and the server that, you know, it's going to start failing, you know, what what time it is and, and everything else. <clears throat> so in order to keep them updated, Windows has a Windows time service, and you can set that up to go and get time from a... NTP network time server using NTP network time protocol and but it always it's sometimes it just doesn't work I've found that sometimes some servers just wander off and they don't even care they you know you try and tell it okay update 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 keep going come on let's you know update get back on track and they try and slowly move time back to normal <clears throat> and it just doesn't work it just doesn't keep up with time correctly so I've been going and putting in a PowerShell script that allows me to to do that. So I found this script out in the uh, PowerShell script gallery um, at Microsoft to get network NTP time with PowerShell. <clears throat> and this just creates a function that allows you to get um, time and call that it'll return time and a few other values and stuff so it, it's very long uh, there's 200 lines to this code it has to go get the time and bitwise and decode it and, and everything else so I just took it as it was um, you do have to update the time server that you're running off of which is here in the param section at the top um, then down here towards the bottom I've stripped out most of the comments just for my own cleanliness I can go back <clears throat> to that other PowerShell gallery site if I want more information but so here it's going to return some values NTP server NTP time how much how much time the seconds that you're off uh, different things like that um, so down here after the function which is called get NTP time um, I apply that and set that to an array so it's going to go get the time put it in an array and then I'm going to pull out the NTP array, just the NTP time, just getting the time out of that and setting that to this NTP date time variable. So now I have this <clears throat> NTP time variable that has the date and the time in it ready to go. Then I just do a set date here, set date NTP date time, and that will set the date and time on my server. So now once I have this, then we need to go to task scheduler, create a basic task, call it set time we're gonna do this weekly um, if you have a server that really goes crazy you know maybe you want to go a little bit sooner than that but weekly usually I find is pretty good I'm setting it on Sunday at 10 p.m. let's start a program so this is a PowerShell script so what we need to do is go C comma backslash Windows uh, system 32 Windows PowerShell uh, I forgive this 1.0 or v1.0 we'll go look it up okay system 32 uh, then we're going to go Windows PowerShell v1.0 <clears throat> and come down here <clears throat> and run PowerShell now the parameters of course is C colon backslash scripts and then we're going to run since I never like typing in scripts I always come here and copy it from there <clears throat> directly into that because that keeps all of the all the you know like like right there I just did two typos and we'll make that capital S okay so keeps for different long long things like that I always copy and paste the name of it <clears throat> so we're gonna run PowerShell and we're gonna run scripts set date from NTP 
hit next okay that's fine click finish and boom now we have this set date time so <clears throat> I want to change some properties here I want to run whether the user is logged in or not because <clears throat> if I only do it when it's run it people someone's logged in and this is a server it may get rebooted and nobody may you know ever log in on it so we're gonna hit OK we have to enter our administrator password ah. This server has been doing this, so you need to just say that. There we go. Okay, so let's actually change my adjust my date and time here. And we're going to change it. We're going to just set it off by a couple of minutes. Change it. Okay, now it says 614. We're going to right click this, say run. It's going to be running. Oops, it's already set it back to 626. So it's our, it's done it. Now, one thing I did have to do, um, if you're gonna, if the time's gonna be off by a lot, by many, many minutes, then you need to increase this value. So the offset in milliseconds of how far. So if it's only, if you're less than, you know, say a thousand milliseconds off, then it will adjust the time. But if you're like five minutes off, then it wouldn't. So you need to set that up to the value that you want to make sure and force the time to come back to being able to update it. So, I mean, whatever, I mean, if, if your server is drifting off by four and five minutes, may, just make sure this number in milliseconds is higher than four or five minutes, and then it will update the time for you. Okay. All right. So that's how I do it. That's how I manage these things that get their time that get skewed off. And then suddenly database servers don't log in, users can't log in, database queries start failing, a lot of different things that, you know, Active Directory is necessary in order to work. And this keeps it updated and, and running. All right, well, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or any other suggestions about how to do this, uh, just comment down below. And since uh, YouTube doesn't like uh, smaller creators who are, you know, aren't in the top tier i guess you know if you share share this video out to somebody else that you think it might be helpful for then do that and then that helps my channel gets hopefully i'll get more subscribers and everything i'm 73 subscribers i'm it's i get i actually had a video past a thousand over a thousand views um which is great i, I love that i love seeing and commenting and, and interacting with people and and all that it's just it's been pretty cool all right well thanks for watching this one take care